Meeting Board, Terry Casada, CIP Manager. As was read into the record, this resolution concurs with the action that you took as council to approve the agreement with Eagle City for the development of architectural guidelines. And as a reminder, these are the guidelines that we expect will uh, establish the character and the nature of the development, whether it's development that the city undertakes or development that private developers ideally will be undertaking shortly. Um, so that, again, we have a unified uh, character to the transit-oriented development. Because the funds have been loaned to the TIRZ, we require the board's concurrence with council action. So staff uh, requests your approval of this item. Move to approve. The motion approved. Is there a second? Second. Motion approved and a second. Are there any further questions from the board? Please uh, pull the board now. Miller? Aye. 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 To adjourn. This, this meeting of the board members is adjourned. All right. This meeting of the regular city council is now in session. Uh, we already pledged allegiance. Uh, next agenda, open forum. Is anyone in, from the council want to address the? Anyone in the, in the uh, audience want to address the council on the? On the any of the agenda items? Yeah, Ms. Gabriela Fraga? Yes. Yes, yes ma'am. She's a coach. Good evening, Mayor. It's not an agenda item, but I just actually I'm coming from the county with uh, Commissioner King's office just to inform you all that we're going to be having hosting free community cleanup events throughout the county, and I wanted you all to be informed. There's going to be one here in Horizon at El Rocio Yard. There's different dates on the flyer that we do have. And they're throughout the county in San Luisario, Fabens, um, East Montana. There's also on the west side. And we wanted to let everyone know. And with your permission, if you, would, if you wouldn't mind me leaving some flyers here for everyone to have. Just to let you all know. To participate. All right. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Appreciate Thank you. you so much. Good evening. Would anyone else from the, the audience like to address the council? Okay. Is there a motion to approve? Is there a second? There's a second. Please poll the council. Miller? Aye. 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 And the motion to approve. Can we? Item, I would like to, to pull uh, the CIP. Okay. CIP uh, item number four. Item number four. Oh, yes. Yes, what, what do we need to do to apply to this? Motion to reopen. Second. Yes, sir. A motion, a, a motion and a second to reopen. The last agenda item. Pull the council. Miller? Aye. Quiroz? Aye. is now open. Uh, is there any, uh, you want to pull the uh, CIP? Yeah. Item number four. Item number four. Yeah. Okay. You have to have a motion. Item number. We have to have a motion. Yeah. No, we have to, if we reopen the item, we have to pull it back. But okay. Without well, item number four. So I believe there's a little to this. So what we want to do is reconsider the consent agenda and we want to have a discussion, I believe, on item four. And then I think there's a clarification needed on item six. So um, if, if I think we have a motion to um, reconsider the consent agenda. I believe council already did yeah. that. Okay. And so now we'll move to item four. Do we need to reapprove yes. the consent agenda without those two items? Yes. Sir. Okay, move, move to, re, to approve the remainder of the consent agenda. So you're 
second home. Also, excuse Mr. Garcia. Motion carries on to number four, number six are on the regular agenda. The remaining consent agenda is approved. Item number four is discussion and action. This is on an update on the capital improvement program. And I had a specific question on that. Is that unless somebody else needs to hear something? I wanted to hear about court. Okay, mm -hmm. go ahead. You always want to hear about court. <laughs> Would you like for me to skip to, to Corky or you know? Would you be able to have the entire presentation? Of course, that's up to council's discretion. Sure. All right. Good evening, Council Terry Casada, CIP manager. Um, we don't have a whole lot of, of changes on some of these projects, so I'll try to go through them as quickly as possible. But again, if there's any questions from council, I'm happy to address them. Um, Oxbow and Pauline Streets, uh, we still are working on, working with the HR MUD. Uh, we expect that they will have their line installation on Pauline and Bro uh, completed in April of 2022, and we still owe you an, uh, an agreement, a revised agreement, for the city's design of Oxbow, uh, Pauline, and uh, Bro. Uh, municipal facilities phase one, we're continuing to work with USDA. We're updating our financial narrative and the CIP um, plan that the USDA is requiring that we submit. We expect to have that done here in the next week or so, um, and then we'll start working with bond council on the rest of uh, the steps that we have to take for that loan. And this is the rendering. Golden Eagle Park, uh, we continue working with the contractor. The pump was tested on Monday of this week. Um, and there are some elements that are not working, which is not a surprise, but the electrician and a representative of Rainbird, who is the uh, pump manufacturer, were on site. Uh, we have a plan of action that they have made recommendations to both the contractor and the city We'll meet with the contractor tomorrow to go over the timing of those. Uh, we are taking a rather conservative approach and, and we want to make sure that that's the right step to take. So that's why we want to meet tomorrow. Um, there is a lower cost that we can pursue, uh, but then if that doesn't work, then we'll have to look at replacement of some of the larger components of the pump. Um, so again, we're, uh, we want to make sure that, that we're balancing time and, and cost. So the, the water service that you're proposing here for an additional, I guess, additional line, is that yes, what you're yes, that is Did correct. we already have an additional line for the water park when we installed the tank or no? No, there was no additional water. Line. So this, right, and that was servicing both the existing park prior to the, the renovations right. and the new, the new elements. So this will split that out so that we can use the park, the, the two components of the water park simultaneously. Corky Park, um, council may recall that I reported that we were having um, individuals that were riding with unauthorized vehicles into the park. Uh, so what we are looking at installing are spollards and gates to manage that entry. We still want to make sure that the city has access to the park for maintenance. And so that's where the gates will be, but the bollards will still allow, for example, individuals who use wheelchairs to get through parts of the park, but it won't allow ATVs to get into the park. Uh, so we're working with a contractor on a proposal for that. Uh, we expect to issue a work directive and then bring a change order to the council for that approval. We're also proposing a locking mechanism for the bathroom that's programmable so that we can shut uh, access to, to the bathroom when the park is closed without having to utilize city staff to go out there. 
Um, so we're pushing to get that done as quickly as possible. However, the delivery, as with just about any other construction project, continues to be an issue. Um, so we don't have a great deal of, of confidence on when we can get this, uh, but we're pushing to get this done uh, in the next couple of months and have the park opened by May uh, of this year. And I mentioned to the mayor that I didn't think it would be earlier than April, but I have uh, double checked and, and it's going to be May before we can do that. We want to make sure that when we open the park, it's really ready for the public. Um, because otherwise we're going to have issues with not having access to uh, to the bathroom or the bathroom being open when we really don't want it to be open. Yes, ma'am. Other than the item mentioned, are there anything else pending for the parking? Besides what you mentioned, the bathrooms are finished, everything else is pretty much complete. Yes, and I'm, I'm looking at uh, <laughs> and Ms. Medina now with you and Solar is there our, our construction manager, but is there anything that I've missed? Okay. Just one ADA issue. We have to move a bench, but other than that, I'm not sure if everyone heard Miss Medina. One ADA issue, uh, relocating a bench, but that's it. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Uh, Benton, right away again, something that uh, we need to review a proposal and, and start design. Uh, we're going to miss the first calendar quarter, but we expect to have the, the design to you in, in April. Uh, we are looking at uh, the regional park and potential property uh, acquisition. Uh, we'll bring in the ADA transition plan uh, design. Again, this is something that we're planning to bring to council in April for um, contract. The street maintenance fund um, striping on Darrington except for a crosswalk has been completed. Uh, crack ceiling is continuing and the scheduled completion continues to be April of this year. Um, BRO, as I mentioned, will be packaged with Oxbow and Pauline, but the funding source for BRO's improvements will come from the Street Maintenance Fund. And an update on federally and state funded projects. We continue working with TxDOT on North Darrington reconstruction. Um, and we're working on the utility uh, coordination and also on funding options for the gap between the current funding through the MPO and the project estimate. Uh, yes, sir. Darrington, is, as it extends outward up north, will become John Hayes. And we received a letter from the county uh, today asking for comment on the continuation of John Hayes. How does John Hayes and its connectivity to Montana fit in with our TOD and the reconstruction of Darrington? Uh, can we expect that to be a, an additional circulator or how should we view the, uh, the continuation of, of Darrington all the way to Montana? I, I think you hit on all the points, Alderman Miller. It does provide that connectivity to Montana, so it does provide another point of egress and, and ingress. Uh, certainly with the TOD and the plans, that, is, that can only help uh, because it does provide another way for the traffic to circulate. Um, this is also part of the 2018 uh, regional... RMS. RMS, Regional Mobility Strategy which was approved at the MPO and that the town was a participant in supporting it, um, just like um, uh, Eastlake was part of, of that uh, plan. So, um, not, I'm sorry, not Eastlake, Darrington. So this is just another phase, even though it's outside of the city limits, that provides that connectivity to the town and to the proposed improvements that the town is, is planning at the TOD. Um, there's also direct access to the Park. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. It, it provides another point into mm -hmm. into the town as a whole. Well, to me, it means that there's continuing movement towards a second city, where we had talked about originally with our circulator of the of the bus service to Socorro and the Loop, and this is this is continued reason not to have to go downtown. Indeed. Uh, Indeed. And and this is part. Um, um, what we saw again is, is a, a reinvestment from the county into the eastern part of the county. Um, 
And again, it's it's part of what um, connects the county where it was very clear that there wasn't adequate connectivity and, and streets were incomplete. Well, the county is, in this letter is asking for letters of support. I would encourage all of them, including the mayor, to, uh, to send a letter of support of, of this, this work. I think it would be, I don't know, I'm sure Terry would be glad to help us with that. Absolutely. Absolutely. At what point does John Hayes begin? begin? So it's still Berryville or Darrington? I know Berryville is, is dropping off. Are they, continue, are they going to just call it Darrington or is there going to be Berryville in the middle? It's called Darrington. So it's no longer Berryville. So Jim, uh, John Hayes is from Betty Gano to Montwood Drive is what the, the request right. calls for. So Berryville has been dropped and now it's just yeah. Darrington all the way straight. It's, yeah, it's the main house. It's all the way to Pelicano. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Good. okay. So this is only to Montwood, not all the way to, not quite to, but John Hayes has already been developed. Correct. From well, it's interesting. They're yeah, calling it already, Volume 1 and Volume 2, which uh, yeah, from Pelicano Drive to Montwood Drive. Yeah. And uh, there, are two, there are two textile project numbers for it. So this will be the, the, and that's what we lack so much in Horizon City is north-south access. So. Thank you. Yes, sir. Yes. <clears throat> um, on the city's Darrington reconstruction, um, you, you'll see that you have a couple of items on today's agenda that actually help to support this, and that's the renewal of the agreements for um, appraisal services. Um, we expect that we'll be using some of those, but we will have to bring them back to council to make sure that we've got the federal provisions in there. So this first uh, step is to extend the agreements, but then we'll, we'll bring them back um, after we consult with, with the appraisals, appraisers so that we can add the federal requirements that the town is bound to include with all of its um, contractors and consultants whenever we're using federal funds and we're expecting to use federal funds. Um, safety projects uh, funded by TxDOT, uh, South Darrington Safety Lighting, and North Canalzo Safety Lighting. We're continuing to co coordinate with, with TxDOT on that. Um, the design will continue so that the projects are awarded when they are scheduled, in the fiscal years that they are scheduled. Um, but we have been advised that there will be long lead times because of getting all of the materials, uh, the light, uh, lighting fixture points. Um, the TOD updates, um, as council acted as TIRZ board, uh, those have been approved or concurred with, and we have begun meeting with the, the consultant, Able City, uh, we expect that they will be in town the week of March 28th uh, for a site visit and also for the first open house. As we finalize those, uh, those details, we'll let the, the council know so that you can also let your constituents know that there will be an open house for, for the TOD architectural guidelines. Um, there is another item on council's agenda that's slightly different from the item that you saw as a TIRZ board. Uh, that supports the raise grant. Uh, it adds a lot more responsibility because the town is the uh, sponsoring entity. So it reads slightly differently from, from the support um, that you acted upon as a TIRZ board. Um, and again, we will take this show on the road and ask for our partners to support the, the grant application. And subject to your questions, that's my uh, CIP. Thank you, Council. There's a motion to approve. Is there a second? Second. Thank you, Dr. Kitchell. Please close the count. Hello. Hi. 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 Hi.
provisions. Mayor and Council, may I speak to that item? While we were moving forward with this extension, we found out that there was a name change with this firm. It's actually the same firm, but what I would like to um, ask Council's permission to do is amend the resolution so that this agreement will be with Wilkinson, Pendergrass and Associates LP, formerly known as Wilkinson, Pendergrass and Beard LP. It's the same firm. Um, they just, we found that they filed a, a name change with the Secretary of State. So we want to make sure our records coinc uh, coincide. Well moved. Second. There's a motion to approve and a second. Please call the council. Aye. 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 We're going to do that in the park? That's part of the Good evening, Council uh, Mayor Eddie Garcia with Economic Development. So the next item on the agenda is a request uh, to provide UTEP with a second letter of support so that they can submit uh, for the second phase of their grant to the Economic Development Administration. As you recall, I did come back, I did come uh, before you on October 12th of last year, and I did request that first letter so that UTEP could submit for that first phase of the EBA grant. It's a two-phase um, grant that they're submitting for. And so really, you know, what we're trying to do here for the town of Horizon City is really try to get these high-tech, high-paying jobs that, that come to, to the area. But our effort really is, with in, in conjunction with UTEP and our other partners that we're working with, it, it's a coalition essentially, um, it is, to, is to develop an infrastructure for aerospace, right? Um, can tell you that, you know, we're working with the city of El Paso, we're working with Van Horn, we're working with Fabens, the county of El Paso. It's just a really large coalition of individuals, right? Uh, and so we want to be a part of that here in Horizon City. Uh, just to give you a little bit more background, UTIP did submit that first phase of application. There was like 529 applicants initially, and they were, they were selected to the second phase. So they're one of 50 coalitions that's moving forward. And essentially what they're doing is they're competing for $100 million, right? They're, they're, that's the grant that they're submitting for. So what they've asked us to do is to provide office space here in Horizon City to incubate those aerospace companies, uh, companies that are starting off to have that high-tech, high-paying job coming to your, here to Horizon City. Um, but what they've asked us to do also is to get that office space, but participate at 20% while they put to participate at 80% for the cost of office space. So what we're looking at is our office space where we currently reside, the Horizon EDC, and then an abutting suite, right, for a total of 3,600 square feet. Um, so again, it's gonna be a five-year term that we're gonna be seeking uh, with the landlord in that particular space, uh, if we can acquire it. And again, uh, that is, the, again, to, to help us get that grant. That's the grant that they're gonna be submitting, and that's how we're gonna be participating with, with UTEP and, and the rest of our partners in this coalition. I can tell you that, um, the other thing that they've asked us to do is to make sure, you know, that if possible and where possible that we continue to find permanent office space if, if this is a, a success with, with the different companies they incubate, that we incubate here. So we'll be doing that. But what's beneficial to us in, in, the, in Horizon EDC with the Economic Development Corporation is that they're going to cover 80% of our expenses, which is really going to reduce the amount that we're going to expand for the next five years, right? So we're, we're going to see a, a savings of about Forty to fifty thousand dollars per year, but the plan is to reinvest those dollars to find that permanent space as part of this, right? The permanent office space for for these companies. And so again, uh, we request that City Council does support again UTEP uh, with this application so to see if they're su successful in acquiring this one hundred million dollar grant, so that we can try to locate companies here in the town of Horizon City. 
Uh, is there any questions? Is there a, Mr. Garcia, thank you, great presentation. Um, is it for five years? What happens if um, they find a property around here that's maybe more sufficient than the one at 287? Right, and so that's, so, a, that's a really good question. So I, I think one of the next steps for us if they do mm -hmm. get this grant is I'll work with legal to, you know, memorialize the agreement, right, where we won't have that situation. We we'll ensure that we're not holding on the office space that, you know, you can continue to have skin in the game at 80%. So, I mean, this is just the beginning part of it. I mean, I think at some point we're going to need to memorialize what it is that we're doing and how we're going to move forward if they're successful getting that $100 million back. But, I mean, at the end of the day, really, for us, you know, we're not gonna we're, we're not gonna wait around for the five year term to end. Yeah. You know, as an EDC, we're gonna go out there and try to find that space, right? Yeah. Especially if we start to see in the first couple of years that it's it's successful. So you know, in year three, we're looking at finding you know land, finding office space, finding potentially another grant to, to get a building yeah. set up, yeah. right? Um, because we know that our term is gonna end up, and we're gonna need to find that permanent office space here in Palm Road. So. Yeah. And the perfect tenant might be what I call the street and street. That's why I want to be held to the five year. Right, yeah, yeah, no, yeah, definitely. But look, at the end of the day, typically what we see out here is 18 to a 24 month, you know, turnaround time to build something. So year, year three, we're really, you know, gunning towards towards finding permanent office space. If it's, I mean, if the program is, is successful. Sure. I think it's a great opportunity for Rodney City. It, it really is, you know, we're putting, putting ourselves in the map. So. There's a motion approved and a second. If there are no further questions, please pull the count. Aye. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Mayor and Council, Michelle Garcia, Planning Director. At the last uh, Council meeting, uh, the Council approved um, for a draft agreement to be uh, established between the City and the Centennial Alliance Club for this year's Christmas Parade. And so the term, sorry, let me see if I can open um, The term covers just this year's events, which will occur on December 2nd and 3rd. Uh, using last year's numbers, we anticipate about 28 staff, uh, city staff to be present, and about 24 vehicles to be used to help with traffic control and things of that nature, and then also about uh, $1,600 for traffic control devices and cleanup after the event, and a little under $4,000 for overtime pay. Um, that's an estimate, so we hope to, to keep to those numbers. Again, these are in-kind services for this event that most of our community looks forward to, and so we ask that uh, City Council approve this agreement. Motion to approve. Motion to approve. Is there a second? Second. And a second. Uh, if there are no further questions, it's please pull the count. It's just growing so much. Just some comments. It's growing so much, and with the parade, it's oh, yeah. it's just booming. Are you doing us on? Pull the council, please. Miller. Miller. Hi. Hi.
authorizing the mayor to sign a developer's participation agreement between the town of Horizon City, uh, Camino Real Investment Properties, LLC, and Ranchos Real 15, LLC, for the construction and maintenance of a larger funding area within the town during the Horizon City Town Center Unit 4 subdivision. Mayor Council, Michelle Garcia, Planning Director. This is the final plat for Horizon Crossing Unit 3. It's a commercial subdivision. This is how the zoning map looked before the rezoning uh, was approved for this area. Um, it has to be updated, but this was the zoning plan that was submitted, and so the area in question is here on the zoning map. And the area the, of the ponding area is roughly in this section here. This is the aerial, the location map, and the final plat. This is a zoomed in so you can get a better idea of how the lots are, are being laid out. They will have access off of a 50-foot private driveway utility and drainage easement. Uh, the Planning and Zoning Commission did recommend approval of this plat at their February 7, 21st meeting uh, with the condition that all staff comments be addressed, which they have. And that the proposed 50-foot uh, driveway utility and drainage easement be recorded prior to the recording of the plat, so that it can be documented on the, the recorded plat. In addition to that, uh, I mentioned when the preliminary plat came to council that the developer is proposing to utilize a ponding area that will also serve the residential development to the south. Typically. Uh, the city will not accept a ponding area that serves um, a commercial site where it accepts more than 50% commercial water. Um, in this case, it's accepting about 80% commercial water versus 20. And so item 12 is a developer participation agreement between the city and the developer to cover those additional maintenance costs that the city will incur for accepting that pond. It is estimated that the annual cost for maintenance is about $10,000, um, and we split it 80-20 between the city and the and the developer. So the, the, that's $8,000 per year, and we agreed upon a 10-year term, and the developer agreed to provide a one-time lump sum payment of $80,000. So that will provide for 10 years worth of maintenance and one large, um, rehabilitation project, which usually happens at the 10-year mark. And so uh, the city city engineer, public works director, and staff, our city uh, attorney, have all reviewed this and agreed with it, and we recommend approval of the agreement. Can you put me hope for an inflation factor? <laughs> <laughs> and, and again, because we see the benefit of having that commercial development um, and you know, utilizing the most uh, land for for that development. Okay. Happy to answer any questions. No. Grow on, grow on. Smaller parcels, no big box store anyway. Right. Um, I, I believe they were trying to get a big box store, but it, for some reason they couldn't make that work. So. No. Okay. Is there, yeah. There's a motion to approve. Oh, I'm sorry. We're going to take separate actions. So the first one is on the plat, the final plat. Okay. There's a motion approved. Is there a second? second. For, 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 for item 11. 11. Yeah. Item 11. Just to clarify, that is with that, with that condition? With the condition. Thank you. On the second, all the council, please.
and that they establish Horizon City as the project sponsor responsible for the local match and acknowledging the race grant funding requirements. Good evening, Council. Terry Casada, CIP manager. Uh, this resolution authorizes staff to submit uh, the grant application for the current notice of funding opportunity. As I mentioned earlier, this does have greater provisions because the city would be the, the grant uh, sponsor. And so um, uh, that is one of the acknowledgements that the resolution indicates uh, that the Horizon City would serve as a public sponsor and lead project contact. Uh, that the city commits to fund the local cash match of 20% for the project and uh, also acknowledging that this grant is on a reimbursement basis, which means that the town would have to incur the costs and then request uh, reimbursement. These funds are usually administered by the Texas Department of Transportation. So if successful, we would enter into an agreement with the Texas Department of Transportation, bring that before uh, council and that would lay out more of the details of how the grant would be managed, how the funds would be managed, and who would uh, have the specific responsibilities for the design of the project. Again, this is a very competitive project. Uh, in your backup, we included presentation that uh, you've seen this before. It's it's the the spine of the transit-oriented development that we hope will spur private development. So uh, we want to make a very strong case that this would be transformational for the town. Uh, for really a, a, a small investment when it's coming from the federal government, right? Less than $2 million. So staff is, is requesting uh, your support and approval of this resolution. Um, any idea when this might go to Congress or when it? Um, yes, but I can't think of it right now, <laughs> Mayor. Um, the last time they were pretty fast, we submitted it in, in the summer. Uh, in June and we knew before Thanksgiving, which was very difficult for me because I wanted to have a good Thanksgiving and, and that was, uh, but we knew it was a, a very competitive. So possibly within six months, um, they'll give us a notification. The due date is April 14th. So we should know by the fall whether or not we have the funding for it. Is there a motion on the floor? Please approve. Second, there's a motion to approve and a second. If there are no further questions, please uh, hold the council. Aye. 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 Motion carries. Council, good evening. Terry Quesada, CIP manager. Uh, change order number five adds 13 calendar days to the time for substantial completion and 21 days for the time to the time for final completion. And this accounts for the time that the contractor needed once the water meter was delivered. And you may recall that there was a delay in, in getting that delivered, even though the, the contractor requested it early in, in November. It took about three weeks for uh, for the, the meter to get here because there was an emergency at one of the school campuses and so HRM diverted the meter to one of the school campuses. After receiving the meter, the, the contractor had to, um, had to make some adjustments um, to hook up the, the restroom and completing the landscaping on the north side of the park. So this change order grants them the time for that because that was not something that they could control and they could not uh, identify the fittings until the meter was received on site. There is no additional cost uh, for this change order. This is only change order for time. However, because it is more than seven working, seven calendar days or five uh, work days, we're bringing it to council. That's been the, the practice and, and the authority that council has granted us. Uh, so uh, staff is recommending approval our construction manager has reviewed this as well as the design consultant, and uh, they agree with, with the time requested by the contractor. Will there still be a change order number six if the uh, completion date is passed? Yes, sir. There will be a, a, a number six and maybe even a number seven. It depends on how quickly we can get all of the information for both the locking mechanism and um, 
and the gates and bollards. And again, the the element that is questionable is a delivery date, right? Um, that's what we expect a certain amount, but it isn't always what is expected. It's approved. Second. There's a motion approved and a second. Are there any further questions from the council? Hold the council, please. Miller? Aye. Fields? Aye. Ben Vidian? Aye. Leon? Aye. Padilla? Aye. Corona? Aye. Motion carried. Thank you, council. Thank you. This is uh, to, um, to allow our uh, uh, staff and to enjoy time with their family during this slow period of the year. And uh, I, uh, yeah, just just that to allow um, our staff to spend time with their families over the holidays. And I wish we could do the same for our police, but you know, they. That's what we signed up for. <laughs> <laughs> right, but we appreciate our police officers. But. Uh, I recommend we approve. Motion to approve. There's a motion to approve. Is there a second? And a second. Holy Council, please. Miller? Aye. 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 Uh, Mayor, City Council, uh, recently we don't, at, at this point, we don't have a contract with an ambulance service, but we have been using Elite. Uh, we did put out to bid an RFP for, um, for uh, services, and we only had two takers. We had Elite Medical Transport, and we had City Ambulance Service based out of Houston. There is a big difference in the cost. There's a breakdown there. Um, there's a difference of 101,000 for a month and a difference of 1,215,000 for a year and the difference of 3,645,000 uh, for the three years. So Elite is the best qualified candidate for the country. They have uh, been doing a, a great job, what I've heard of some constituents here in Horizon. Chief, have you had any problems with them here since we've had them? Not, not that I know of. I didn't really deal with them initially, but they had a situation, and I'll give you an example. They had a situation today where one of their ambulances got struck, got T-boned by another vehicle. I can't tell you if it happened in Horizon, um, but it was the ambulance that uh, occupies Horizon. They were down for 30 minutes, and then they were back up. Right. So they provide really good service. If they don't have an ambulance for us, they'll take the one in Sapporo. They have right. one that's floating. Yeah, well, we just have that name on the side. Yeah, <laughs> yeah right? I've already spoke to Rob Campton about this. We had one, one ambulance here in Horizon. <laughs> there's no, no, no. Well, there's one in Horizon, there's one in Socorro, and there's a float. And I believe um, this new contract allows them to do service between hospitals, right. which they didn't do before. So that ambulance, if we need them, will stop doing the, the transports and service us. Yeah. They make big money on that transfer. This contract is just, is it uh, a year? It's for three years. Three years? Okay. Has it been two years? Yeah, three years. Three years, oh, and wow. I think it might have even expired early February. February. February 1st. Yeah. This other ambulance service, oh, right. it, it costs a lot. So. <laughs> they do service Houston, San Antonio, San Marcos, uh, Midland, Odessa, but I really don't know how they would have been able to, I mean with the, the but what they're charging us is no, no. It's insane. Uh -huh. oh, it's a There's a motion to approve. Second. And a second. Yeah, I have a question. Did we ever get reimbursed for services? 
Right. Uh, the original contracts? Or the, no, the lead. For example, if it's a insurance company pays the lead, can you get some of that money back? No. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, their rate subs was based on the fact that they would be reimbursed. Reimbursed um, by, by the yeah, insurance company. Like that. See, they have a they have an eight minute response time. If they don't, they I, this is something I didn't know because it's new to me as far as uh, addressing this. But every month they submit a report to the city. So whether they're they're doing what they're supposed to be doing or they're explaining why they didn't. Thank you, Chief. Motion approved and a second. Oh, holy council. Mayor, City Council, this service is needed for our detectives to do background checks on some of the criminal cases that they handle. This is the only type of service that's out there. I don't know any other company that provides the same type of information that these uh, investigators would be getting from this company. Um, it, did, it did go up a little bit, but not by much. And yes, it's 3% every year but it's a, a needed software for our, 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 excuse me, our investigators to utilize. Motion to approve. Sorry, motion to approve and a second. We asked for another 20, 10, oh, 20 God. God. a day. Uh, <laughs> yeah. No, sir. Holy Council, I was. Holy Council, please. Miller? real quick I do enjoy that project that's coming up I actually live on the other side of John Hayes <laughs> so this is perfect at least before I retire hopefully it'll be done so thank you I was already drafting one the Council, Pat Renlil, Finance Director. Uh, this is a three-year contract for uh, internet and um, telephone service. Uh, currently, we have AT&T providing us this service, and um, it was, our contract with them is up, and uh, uh, Chief and I decided to look to see if there were other providers, and of course, Contera uh, came up. Both providers are under Region 19 contracts, so the, the you know the prices are pretty much set and pretty much um, uh, been discussed and are the most available and the most economical. Um, Contera already has us hooked up to um, with their fiber coming into this building because of dispatch, and so that made it a little bit more um, uh, a little bit more. Um, Pro, uh, what's the word? Um, not so much economical, but reasonable, because we were already connected. And uh, over the past years, uh, we have not really had uh, any trouble with AT and T as far as service is concerned. But they have terrible customer service. I spent a year and a half 
trying to get a dispute settled a year and a half, okay? And each time I had to talk to somebody different, uh, I was talking to somebody either in Florida or California or whatever it was. But anyway, it took a year and a half to get something settled. And uh, with no apologies, no, uh, um, you know, no considerations at all. But anyway, so uh, I was not going to go through that again. And, <laughs> and I would not want my successor to have to go through anything like that again. So uh, one, of the, one of the driving forces for, as far as my selection of who, who the vendor was, was to have the availability of somebody to deal with. Um, but on top of all of that, Contera did come in uh, um, less expensive. Uh, again, we already have the fiber, and uh, it's just a matter of switching us over to, to a new service. The moral being, don't make that <laughs> <laughs> Motion approved and a second. Hold the council, please. Aye. Uh, again, Mayor and Council, Pat Rano, Finance Director, uh, you are required to uh, approve uh, the EDC budget annually, so therefore you're required to approve any um, amendment to it. Uh, when the EDC budget was uh, developed back in um, June, July, when we normally do budgets, uh, we were without a permanent director, and so uh, we were without a vision. So uh, with him coming in, it, the, the, Determined that there was a need for an additional uh, uh, expertise, and so uh, we needed to uh, uh, adjust the budget for that particular person, which was hired in November. So basically, it's a it's a ten month adjust um, ten ten and a half month adjustment for salary and benefits. Second. There's a motion to approve and a second, and I do want to say about the EDC. The, the job that they're doing, I, I really appreciate it. They're really they're making things happen. Appreciate that. Great work. And, and Walter? All the council. <laughs> 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 the council, please. Hi. Right. Yes. 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 Thank you, Mayor. Council. Thank you. Seeing no further items on the agenda, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. This meeting is adjourned. Thank you all for attending. Can you send the city sign for
security guards left it open, uh, unlocked the gate yeah. to allow families through, but he didn't lock it, so uh, the thugs, the aficionados, uh, took advantage and they, they had a party there. <laughs> but I know there were reports of like 22 deaths, but uh, it's a lot of people out there. Yes, that's what I did. The whole, uh, for the whole Sunday. Yeah. 